I hate it when my brother Charlie has to go away. I hate it when my brother Charlie has to go away. My parents constantly try to explain to me how sick he is, that I am lucky for having a brain where all the chemicals flow properly to their destinations like undammed rivers. When I complain about how bored I am without a little brother to play with, they try to make me feel bad by pointing out that his boredom likely far surpasses mine, considering he's confined to a dark room in an institution. I always beg for them to give him one last chance. Of course, they did at first. Charlie has been back home several times, each shorter in duration than the last. Every time without fail, it all starts again. The neighborhood cats with gouged out eyes showing up in his toy chest. My dad's razors found dropped on the baby slide in the park across the street. Mom's vitamins replaced by bits of dishwater tablets. My parents are hesitant now, using last chances sparingly. They say his disorder makes him charming, makes it easy for him to fake normalcy and to trick the doctors who care for him into thinking he is ready for rehabilitation. That I will just have to put up with my boredom if it means staying safe from him. I hate it when Charlie has to go away. It makes me have to pretend to be good until he is back. I tried to love my son. I tried. I tried to convince myself there was nothing wrong with him. When he was six, he got in trouble at school for killing beetles. <laughs> boys will be boys, I laughed, but I didn't believe it. I tried to convince myself that he was normal. When he was eight, I saw him playing with a decapitated bird. It was already dead, I assured myself and I pretended the scissors I found later were just covered in paint, but I didn't believe it. I tried to convince myself that he was a good person. When he was 10, I found his drawings graphic and disturbing and full of hatred. It's just a phase, I told myself, but I didn't believe it. I tried to convince myself that he would never hurt anyone. It was an accident, I told the nurses at A&E when they pulled the fork out of my hand, but I didn't believe it. I tried to convince myself that he wasn't dangerous. She slipped and fell, I said in my statement to the police as they took the poor dead teen away, but I didn't believe it. I tried to convince myself that it was out of his system, that he wouldn't hurt anyone else, that everything would be all right. I didn't believe it. I tried to love you, I said, through tears as I trained the gun at him. I know, he replied, and I pulled the trigger. The gun clicked, empty, and my son smiled. I tried to love you, too. I didn't believe it. I would like to give a heartfelt thank you to the special friends of the channel for your overwhelming generosity. If you would like to support the channel, the link is below in the description. Also, please send me your stories and poems 
to Duchess of Darkness 27 at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Duchess.OfDarkness and Twitter at Duchess of Dark and two. I want to thank all my listeners for your kindness, your encouragement, and your support. It means the world to me. Thank you for joining me. Until next time. <laughs>